Hi, yeah, so I'm Katie, a PhD student from Bristol. I'm supervised by Richard Wall. And today I'm going to talk to you about a study we conducted to investigate the distribution and prevalence of ticks and tick-borne disease in cattle. So the aims of the study were to collect the data on prevalence of livestock farms with ticks across the country and to use this data to identify areas of high risk for ticks on livestock farms. We collected data on tick present using a retrospective questionnaire survey asking farmers about their livestock in 2018. The questionnaire was made up of two pages of closed questions, including questions about holding type, the presence of ticks on livestock, tick-borne disease and tick treatment. We sent 7,200 questionnaires stratified by six regions to farmers whose addresses have been randomly selected from a commercial database. And we collected data for both sheep and cattle farms, but today I'll just talk to you about the cattle data. So 805 cattle farms responded. Here you can see the location of the respondents. 72% of these farms farmed beef, 13% dairy, and 15% farmed both. In order to visualize the density of the respondent data points, respondent point data was smoothed across Britain using a technique called kernel density estimation. And that produced uh, this map here in the middle of respondent density. The map on the right is a kernel density of farms in Great Britain. And as you can see, the density of questionnaire respondents was similar to the underlying density of cattle farms. And the data were also generally representative of the underlying farm population in terms of the ratio of dairy to beef farms and the ratio of upland to lowland farming. So again, you can see here the cattle farms which responded to the questionnaire with orange dots showing those farms which reported having ticks on their livestock in 2018. The prevalence of cattle farms reporting ticks was 6.2% and tick presence was significantly associated with upland farming, region and the presence of sheep on cattle farms. So it looks like there's a higher risk of ticks in Wales and North England, but these areas also had a high density of respondents. So we needed to correct for this bias caused by the underlying distribution of the data points. To do this, we again use kernel density smoothing and we compared the ratio of the density of farms reporting ticks to the density of farms not reporting ticks to assess the relative risk of tick presence. And then spatial statistical analysis was used to identify significant clusters of farms reporting ticks, areas which had significantly high risk of ticks. So this is the relative risk map. Yellow and orange show the highest relative risk and blue the lowest. You can see that the risk of cattle farms having ticks is generally higher in the west, with areas of significantly higher risk shown by the bold contour line. So even when accounting for the underlying distribution of data points, the areas of highest risk were North Wales, Cumbria and West Scotland. And in these significant hotspot clusters, prevalence of farms with ticks ranged from 48 to 100%. So prevalence was a lot higher in these hot, hotspot clusters compared to the overall sample population. If we take the data and look at it categorically by dividing it into different regions, which is shown here, the percentage of cattle farms reporting ticks in each region, Scotland, Wales, North, Central, East, and Southwest England. You can see that ticks were reported across all regions, but prevalence was found to differ significantly with region, with prevalence being highest in the Southwest and Scotland at around 10%, and Central and East England had the lowest reported prevalence. The error bar is shown here in 95% confidence intervals, as are all the error bars shown in this presentation. So this graph here shows the proportion of cattle farms with ticks reporting ticks in each month to show the seasonal trend in reported tick prevalence. And the proportion of tick cases reported each month was generally consistent with tick seasonal activity. Although the peak in summer was later than the expected spring peak of nymph and adult tick activity. It's worth noting that as this data from a questionnaire survey is based on farmers being aware of and spotting ticks on their livestock. Interestingly, the prevalence of sheep farmers reporting ticks on sheep was higher than for cattle at 13%. And 
This might more likely reflect true prevalence due to the more frequent handling of sheep compared to beef cattle. So the questionnaire also asked about tick treatment. This graph shows the proportion of cattle farms reporting using different tick treatments. As far as I'm aware, there are currently no licensed treatments for use against cattle ticks in the UK, but 8% of cattle farm respondents reported treating for ticks. And of the farms which reported having ticks, 60.4% reported, reported treating for ticks as insecticide. In terms of tick-borne disease, 2% of cattle farms reported at least one case of tick-borne disease in their livestock in 2018. And this was 33% of the farms which reported having ticks. The two most common tick-borne diseases reported were red water and tick-borne fever, which is what we would expect. And this graph shows the proportion of cattle farms in each region reporting red water or tick-borne fever. And again, tick-borne disease prevalence differed significantly with region. So a similar spatial analysis was conducted on tick-borne disease presence and absence data points. These results should be interpreted with a degree of caution because of the low proportion of tick-borne disease. But a significant cluster of red water cases were identified in the southwest, with prevalence in this cluster being 6%. So this here is the relative risk map for red water, with the red points showing the reported cases of red water, and again yellow and orange are showing areas of higher risk. Interestingly, five out of six of the red water cases in the southwest were from lowland farms, and as clinical disease is generally only present when there is a breakdown in population immunity, it might be that cattle in the southwest lowlands have less consistent contact with ticks compared to cattle in the uplands, therefore not being exposed at a young age when clinical disease is less severe and immunity can be developed. So to conclude, tick infection risk to livestock is spatially aggregated with areas significantly elevated in North Wales, Northwest England and Western Scotland. 6% of cattle farms reported ticks, but in hotspot clusters, prevalence ranged between 48 and 100%. 2% of cattle farms reported tick-borne disease, but on farms reporting ticks, prevalence was 33%, with red water cases significantly clustered in the southwest. And upland farming region and the presence of sheep on cattle farms were all significant risk factors for cattle ticks. So I'd just quickly like to thank Hannah for her support with the analysis and Bristol Centre for Agriculture Innovation and MSD for their financial support. <laughs>